Roger, Roger. Look, the station uh, messing around here. How about moving off frequency, okay? And good afternoon, everyone. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. My name is Jim, and this is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network. This is a directed network, and I am net control. If any time during this net, uh, should an emergency arise, please notify net control, and we'll stand by and allow those in need to access this frequency. Is there any priority or emergency traffic at this time? And hearing nothing, we will continue. This net is all about ham radio. If you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We're recording now live till 5, and then we'll post it up on YouTube so you can come by later and do a call letter search for KC9VKV, that's Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our QSOV like page where we're now featuring about uh, 1,270 uh, QSOV like recordings. Also, this afternoon we're running four internet SDR receivers monitoring Rochester, New York, Milford, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, Georgia, and Arlington, Virginia, trying to get a better copy on our 100 watt friends. Now the audio from these four SDR receivers comes up on a six position rotary selector. Also on this selector is our local receiver audio. And today our local receiver is running two large 10 foot vertical magnetic loop antennas. One aimed north and south, the other east and west. The north and south mag loop can be rotated. They are selected by a three position rotary selector. Position 3 of this selector is a cophase option that many times is 3 to 4 dB hotter than Magloop 1 or 2 by themselves. We do use a lot of rotary selectors in our shack, mainly because there's nothing faster than a rotary switch for comparing multiple signals. Also today we'll be running our input source indicator, so when we switch from an internet SDR receiver to our local 990 receiver, you'll be able to hear the switch and see the switch. You'll have to check it out on our YouTube QSO VLOG video. Well, those are our working conditions. How about yours? This is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network. And now, let's check in and see if Charlie, K1GZL, is on frequency to bring us up to date on the latest 40 meter band propagation. Charlie's QTH is up north in northern New Hampshire, near the Canadian border. Charlie, got a copy? Charlie, got a copy? Yes, Jim, a little QRM at times, but we're copying very well uh, direct. Uh, this is Charlie, where it's mostly uh, sunny. The temperature is 63 degrees, 63 degrees, and not a bad uh, day. And I have a little bit of Captain Mike on here from uh, yesterday. You might get a kick out of uh, Go ahead. Uh, Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, um, I'm, I'm ready for Captain Mike, Roger. I'm ready for Captain Mike, Roger. Yeah, uh, what am I coming in best on, uh, on the Milford? Uh, right now it looks like Milford. Uh, let me, um, I'll check uh, Rochester this next go and see if uh, if it's any better. But I think Milford's going to be the one this afternoon. Milford's going to be the one this afternoon. Okay, Roger, Roger. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, here's Captain Mike yesterday as he's approaching eastern Iowa at 37,000 feet, uh, moving at uh, 500 knots. Uh, 70 uh, knot, uh, 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 I think a 70 knot uh, tailwind, or 40 knot, well anyway, he was near 600 miles per hour heading uh, east, and uh, the temperature out was minus uh, 50, uh, I mean minus, uh, yeah, 50 Celsius, or about uh, uh, 
60 degrees, 60 degrees below zero Fahrenheit at 37,000 feet, and uh, here he is. Captain uh, Mike, and we had a fellow in Phoenix, Arizona, and here is uh, Ian yesterday talking about all the high winds uh, he had down there in Melbourne, Australia. Here he is. 45 kilometers an hour. Uh, I don't think we had that. It got uh, pretty strong here um, a couple of hours ago. Okay, 73. Never, never coming to the nerve when it's uh, flowing like that. I think the QO3 Mike Oscar now clear. Uh, QRT, T will tomorrow. Okay, uh, Jim, how did that come through? Go ahead. Roger, Roger, sounds uh, great. Uh, I did have to go to Rochester uh, after comparing it to Rochester. Um, was a little cleaner. I think they're having uh, some uh, lightning up in the uh, Milford area. It did have uh, quite a bit of uh, lightning impulse noise on uh, Milford in retrospect, so uh, I did uh, move off to uh, Rochester, Roger. Yeah, I understand. In fact, I think you're correct. I, I do believe there is some bad weather uh, down closer to uh, Milford, closer to Milford. Part of that is a little bit of the leftover from a former Hurricane uh, uh, Laura, former Hurricane Laura. And uh, there's also a, a, a fair amount of rain, not from that particularly, but from another disturbance coming in from uh, central uh, or north of the Great Lakes that will probably impact us uh, early tomorrow morning. Uh, and then again, uh, after a period of calms uh, tomorrow evening, we'll get some showers and maybe some thunderstorms. So the whole country has it's been having its active uh, period. Uh, but you sound good. There's a little bit of uh, QRM on there. I can switch antennas, and it looks like it's west, southwest of me. However, for the most part, fortunately, you are overriding it, Jim. KC9VKV, K1GZ, and the devil. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, those uh, recordings, like I say, were most uh, excellent, and we do uh, do appreciate that. Uh, so, uh, is the weather all to your liking up that way now? Weather all to your liking up that way now? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's very nice. The average summer temperature has been above normal, uh, Jim, been above normal all over uh, uh, the east and most of the country has been above normal. However, in the last uh, couple of few days, it has cooled down uh, considerably. It has cooled down uh, con at a normal high temperature now with about 68 or 69 degrees. And when you get to January, the normal average high temperature Fahrenheit, <clears throat> 17 degrees. How's that? Go ahead. Hey, Roger, that. And uh, you won't believe it, but uh, as you were speaking, I was uh, going through my SDRs, and uh, you tend to be 10 to 15 over uh, on uh, Georgia and uh, Arlington uh, SDRs also. So uh, just a great signal, Charlie. Just a great signal, Charlie. Oh, thank you. Great signal, Charlie. Thank you much for that, uh, that report. I'll be talking to uh, Captain Mike uh, uh, in about two hours and 20 minutes, two hours and 20 minutes, uh, from now or 6 p.m. Eastern here on this uh, 28th of, uh, of August 2020. So he'll be heading west toward uh, uh, Sacramento, California, where they've had a lot of polluted air and terrific forest fires all across California. Although when he left yesterday morning, uh, he said uh, things had improved as far as the air quality goes a little bit. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens when he gets back out there. 
he's not sure if he's uh, flying back uh, in uh, in the in the Boeing uh, 7, uh, 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 07, uh, and the 767. Pardon me, the 767, or coming back uh, commercially, depending what crews uh, get assigned to uh, what aircraft. So, Jim, uh, thank you so much for the QSO, and we'll try to catch you uh, next Friday at the usual time. And uh, uh, you ho I hope you have a very good, uh, a very good uh, uh, week uh, coming up, and also that your health uh, stays in uh, real good shape. Uh, KC9 VKV K1 GZL. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Likewise, uh, health-wise, uh, you guys stay uh, stay safe and uh, in good health up that way. And uh, we have been uh, exercising <laughs> much uh, muscle strength as we uh, continue to modify our ambulance into a RV telecommunications headquarters. Um, we are in the process of installing our air conditioning now. And uh, most interesting, uh, I had uh, worked on one of the cubbies up front to uh, put this air conditioner where they used to have one and uh, the one that they had originally in the ambulance uh, all kinds of stuff came back from the engine into the to the house uh, we call the body of it the house and uh, you know it, it seemed to I guess function okay but uh, when I tried to put uh, our air conditioner up there I even put a, a 40 uh, uh, whatever uh, a blower to uh, exhaust the of uh, the uh, air heat but uh, could not uh, could not uh, keep up with the AC as far as keeping that uh, cool up there so we did uh, it was uh, going through uh, various uh, incendiary problems and um, but uh, I happened to notice that the rear door window was uh, exactly uh, just a little bit larger than the AC unit so I did uh, proceed in the rain. We're getting remnants of the hurricane uh, up this way uh, today also. And uh, between the showers, I was out there, uh, popped the window out and got the AC in there and got it all uh, not exactly uh, battle uh, ready, but at least it's in there and uh, it's uh, the air flow is blocked and separated from the inside to the outside. And it's functioning in the economy mode, which it has too, because, uh, you know, we'll probably be running that on the uh, as we tool down the highway on the uh, generator of course that ambulance does have a hundred and sixty amp uh, alternator I believe it is or 190 a big 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 thing but uh, it certainly has been a, a a new awakening here as far as us trying to uh, to convert this uh, ambulance into a um, uh, uh, RV com radio command post, but it's uh, it's interesting, and I think it's going to work out really great. Anyway, uh, this is the Friday afternoon QSO VLAG network. My name is Jim, and I'm uh, better known in some circles as Dr. VKV. We are recording now live till 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We'll post this recording up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So when you go to YouTube, just do a call letter search for KC9VKV. That's Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. And that will take you to our QSO VLOG page. And on that page, you'll be looking for one QSO entitled My Group Air Check 8. 2820 and the numbers are a date reference that's uh, today's date my group air check 82820 on a uh, youtube search uh, for KC9BKV and this is uh, uh, Jim and we are listening if you've got a radio you want to check out give me a shout if you've got a radio you want to check out give me a shout see you next Friday Jim yes sir see you buddy Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor we are listening Station Indian ending in Bravo. Uh, come back slowly, uh, phonetically, with your call sign, please. Kilo Echo Zero Delta Golf Bravo. Roger, Roger, and uh, what's the name there? Jim. How are you doing today, Jim? Well, I'm doing pretty good, sir. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We aren't getting much of that. We need the rain. We aren't getting much of that rain from the hurricane, but it has cooled it off just a little bit down here in Missouri. 
Roger, Roger. Well, welcome in, sir. Like I say, we we don't usually go uh, uh, west, but uh, I'll uh, I'll take it, Roger. Yeah, you're sounding good today. What radio are you running, sir? Uh, sometimes better than sometimes worse. Uh, you're sounding good into uh, southwest Missouri. Congratulate you on that uh, ARL uh, radio. Uh, uh, host for running your uh, net. That was good to hear. Yes, sir. I really uh, thankful for that, and thankful for everybody that's uh, helped, uh, you know, contribute uh, to uh, to me getting that. Uh, uh, really, uh, really appreciate everybody's uh, uh, joining us on uh, Friday afternoons. You know, so we kind of uh, bounce around and. Uh, Try to help out uh, some folks' audio if uh, if we can. You know the the whole thing about our situation is that uh, what we want to do is try to help uh, folks uh, run the best audio that they can in the transmit mode. That's our main our main thing. And what we you know uh, start with is uh, 10 dB of uh, uh, dynamic range, which is the average uh, uh, speech. Uh, without any processing, it's usually uh, said to be 10 dB of uh, dynamic range, <laughs> but that's uh, too uh, too wide a range to actually be able to transmit uh, efficiently. So what we want to do is kind of squash that down to about uh, 3 dB dynamic range, and that makes for a much fatter transmit signal and a whole better uh, situation of signal-to-noise ratio. And uh, so to get our uh, 3 dB uh, dynamic range, we have to uh, to squash about 7 dB of uh, normal speech uh, to get it. So, uh, you know, we thought about it for a while, and then we came up with, uh, you know, maybe we could get uh, uh, 4 dB uh, of uh, squash in the um, uh, the uh, compressor limiter, running it at a three out of ten, a bare minimum. But um, you know, maybe we can get to four dB of uh, uh, compression there. And then, as we uh, adjust the um, uh, the ALC, uh, we adjust it uh, up to where we can get about three dB of uh, limiting. Uh, by uh, our audio mic control uh, by running that ALC meter mid-scale to two-thirds. So we pick up uh, another uh, um, 3 dB of uh, limiting there. So our, our end result is uh, 3 dB dynamic range in the uh, transmit mode and um, that makes for a, a very efficient uh, a transmission. Long way to go <laughs> to get there, Jim. Roger. Oh, I understand. Sorta. You putting any beds in that uh, ambulance? Or is it just going to be uh, a vehicle you drive in and have a bunch of radio stuff in? Oh no! It uh, it's got the biggest bed. Sometimes when it, when it's time for bed, the the bed is almost the whole thing. I mean, you, you know, uh, my philosophy on that uh, ambulance is that it uh, should be the best of whatever it is at whatever time it's supposed to be. So uh, when it's uh, doing its function, it is uh, you know. And uh, today, like I say, we got the air conditioning in, and uh, we'll be trying to run that in the economy mode and we did pull it down to uh, 67 degrees today so um, I think we're going to do uh, fairly well there and uh, that helps us uh, oh boy before we just had a, uh, a, a fan in one in the back window which uh, you know was nice but it didn't take out the humidity so uh, you could be in a breeze and and be totally uh, wet with sweat Roger yeah I know I don't have an ambulance but I got a big old Ford van and uh, it, 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 it sits out there in the heat, and it doesn't, whenever you get in it, you know you got to get those windows down and the AC on. Oh, Roger that. Yeah, this has got, uh, it's called the Million Mile Motor. It's uh, a, a diesel F350 uh, 7.3, uh, Roger. How many miles has it got on it now, Jim? I have no idea, but I know it's gone around a few times. This is a 1989, uh, 1989 ambulance, you know, so I am sure that it has gone around a few times. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they do call it the uh, Million Mile Motor, Roger. So you haven't had any trouble 
up with that at all. No, no. Now, it is peculiar as far as when it starts. That sucker wants to take off. When I go to start, you know, you you have an Odiso, you have a delay, so uh, the glow plugs can do whatever they do, you know, for about 10 seconds when you get ready to start it, or 15, somewhere in there. And after, after you know, you hit the key, and then uh, it says wait, and those glow plugs are, are working there. And, and you can tell they're working because uh, they uh, take a, a, hundred, a 100 amp discharge for the time that the glow plugs are, are running. So I, I think all of the glow plugs are working. I can't see how you could have a more of a discharge than 100 amps. That's a bunch, you know, but it's only for like 10 or 15 seconds. And then, you know, you start it. Well, that sucker wants to go in the first second and a half. It's ready to go, but sometimes it starves itself. I mean, it, it'll crank and it's up there, and I can keep, if I keep the RPMs up, uh, you know, it's okay, but if I don't and, it, and the RPMs fall down, it'll uh, usually uh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, stall and I'll have to restart it but it will restart then it takes about uh, three times uh, to go so I think what is happening is I'm getting a little air in the uh, uh, the fuel lines somewhere you know I, I not, don't know for sure I've been bleeding, uh, bleeding uh, th various parts from you know from over a period of time Roger yeah 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 that's, it's, yeah air you don't have quite enough pressure in that fuel pump until it starts, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I um, well, I uh, put a new fuel filter in, and uh, it, it didn't seem to really affect it too much. Uh, uh, I'm going to put one of those glass um, fuel filters in, so I can see just exactly what the level of fuel is before I go to start it. You know, it, it is a, a 1989, so. Uh, they used mechanical uh, fuel pumps uh, back then, so um, the deal is possibly that uh, there is no, f there are limited amount of fuel, and uh, so there's enough to start but not enough to run. So with that uh, glass uh, fuel filter up there by the by the other fuel filter, I'll be able to tell exactly what the uh, uh, the uh, uh, diesel fuel level is, Roger. Running, what's going on? And like I say, when you start it, it's empty. Or yeah, yeah, it give you a better idea. Yeah, so it should be. It's a challenge, you know. Uh, like everything else, it, I mean, you know, if if you got the money, you can go, you know, buy a, a, a half a million dollar uh, a vehicle to uh, do that. But uh, on the other hand, uh, sometimes uh, other things are are more interesting and challenging. Roger. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you mean. And you get it made just exactly the way you want it, too, Jim. Well, that's right. We did cut uh, some of the uh, back uh, normal. It's got a bunch of cubbies. On the outside, it's got cubbies. On the inside, it's got cubbies. So we did cut uh, one, of the, uh, one of the two. Well, it's got four cubbies on the... Uh, on the driver's side uh, back in the in the house we call it and I did drop two of those to make a like a, a place for a, a large uh, a screen TV I think we can get about a, maybe a 50 incher in there Roger <laughs> that's surprising but I, I, I can believe it because you see those big uh, well they aren't real big but uh, those uh, oh uh, sprinters those uh, uh, Mercedes Sprinters, Dodge used to make them too, but uh, they've got those decked out pretty nice for RVs. Oh, right, yeah. I've, uh, you know, pretty much uh, been watching uh, from YouTube a bunch of uh, folks uh, and their different conversions and getting ideas. Uh, like this uh, air conditioning, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a gentleman that. Uh, did put an air conditioner back in one of the outside rear cubbies, and um, boy, that was a bunch of bunch of drilling and and uh, sawzall uh, work there to, to get that hole cut in there. But and but he did, and he's got his air conditioner in that outside cubby. Now the problem is for him to run that, uh, he's going to have to keep that cubby door open, and he can't run it 
going down the highway because you you know you can't get the air in there uh, with that uh, cubby door closed so uh, I was that's why I moved mine up to the front I thought I could do it that way but I couldn't get rid of the, the heat so right now when I went back to that rear door at the top window in the rear door man that is just the cat's meow that's exactly the perfect place for that and we can run that AC as we tool down the highway Roger yep yeah, you'll be able to. Yeah. And it's not taking any space up. And it's, it's taking as little space up as possible. The rest of it's sitting outside. Well, that's right. That's right. And that's the whole trick of, you know, that's the, the whole thing about an air conditioner. You know, you got to keep uh, you got to keep that outside part outside. And if you if you like when I was up in that front cubby trying to run it, I couldn't I couldn't get enough air circulation to keep it cool. But uh, right now, you know, the way we've got it in the window and that uh, rear door, boy, it, uh, you know, it's just like a, a regular regular house window situation. It just works perfectly, Roger. Yeah, well, that's what's for that house rent, too, then. So, yeah. Well, you said you got it down to 67. I'd say it, it'd probably do it. It'd probably get a little cooler than that. Well, I don't know. You know, probably if we ran it in the cool mode, it, it would, you know. But uh, we probably we're going to try to run it in the economy mode, which I think that's, a, you know, that's about uh, 600 watts. I think uh, in the economy mode, and that's uh, pretty much where we want to we want to try to keep it. Now we do have, um, you know, our AC system right now is a uh, it's a 2,000 watt uh, inverter, and uh, that uh, ambulance uh, alternator is 100 160 uh, amp or 190 amp. I forget what it is, but it does does great. You know, diesel. Do, the best thing a diesel does is idle. <laughs> Particularly an ambulance, man. That that motor has got you know unknown uh, unknown hours of uh, idle on it, Roger. <laughs> no, you know it. You know it. You see them sitting around here a lot of times, just sitting at a in a lot waiting, waiting for a call and running that air conditioner and just sitting back waiting. That's it. Now you know the thing is, uh, it it all depends on where you buy your ambulance from. Uh, now, if you buy your ambulance from a, a large metropolis, uh, that's uh, that's their mode is uh, to go out and uh, camp out in a position ready for uh, to respond. But on the smaller uh, fire departments, and you know they usually run EMS and the fire department together. Those things are in house until they get a to get a call, and they're not out uh, idling. So if you get one from there, boy, it, you know, it's practically, practically got to no miles on that motor. Yeah, like you say, it, it, uh, well, where did you end up finding yours at? Because uh, like I say, you see them around, but boy, you'd wonder, I'd wonder about them if I was going to buy one, Jim. And, and like you say, yeah, diesels are great, but I don't know anything about diesels either. I've always worked on gasoline engines. Roger, Roger, me too. And this is a, a new experience. You know, the first time I heard that diesel, I said, my God, <laughs> that motor's in trouble. But, you know, diesels do make a lot of noise. They, they, and, and not all of that noise sounds, <laughs> sounds right necessarily, but, it, you know, it is, and it's just the nature of a diesel to be mechanically loud, uh, you know, and this one does. Uh, this uh, ambulance, uh, the last, it had been licensed to a, a small, community um, um, EMS service and then uh, somehow uh, our sheriff in another county got involved uh, and uh, we wound up uh, having a sheriff cell and the guy that bought it bought it without a title and uh, oh my goodness if you ever if you ever try to uh, <laughs> bring a, a, a vehicle that doesn't have a title well we we wound up uh, that a judge had uh, tried to assist this gentleman in um, getting it uh, licensed and he wrote a, a writ of uh, whatever he you know to help them get a title and uh, unfortunately this guy was French and he had two T's in his last name and somewhere along the line he lost 
one of the T's in his spelling of his last name. So when he presented all of this package to uh, the, the uh, DMV up in uh, uh, Indianapolis, they kicked it all back to him because his name was misspelled by missing that T. Unfortunately, this gentleman was not in good health and it did uh, demise, did, did die before he could get, get, get the situation qualified, you know, and satisfied as far as getting the getting the uh, title so uh, I uh, just uh, took the whole thing and uh, I went back to the judge that did it the first time and I said sir um, I know you tried to help uh, resolve this issue uh, before but unfortunately the gentleman died and I wonder if you might be able to help me again uh, in the same way and uh, uh, we'll try it one more time and uh, judge uh, did uh, give me a, 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 a uh, request for our, our demand for title uh, uh, to be assigned to me, you know. So uh, we're getting ready. That's how close we are right now. It sounds like <laughs> that was a job then, Jim. You had to go see the judge, make an appointment to go see him. And, but, you know, that's what it takes. If you, if you, I, can, I, can, I can see you doing that. Well, I mean, that's, you know, it seemed to me to be a lot more sense to go through the judge that had already done that as opposed to trying to find a judge in my county that didn't know, know me or didn't know anything about the situation, you know. By the mere fact that this other judge in another county had, had already acted in that way the first time uh, just seemed like a natural to, to go back to him. And, and uh, sure enough, he's been a, a great help. And uh, so it should be, uh, you know, hopefully. Hopefully uh, tomorrow we'll be able to uh, to get some more advice and get the uh, package up there and uh, get our, t our title for it and we'll be ready to go. Sound like you're getting off the phone. Roger, Roger. We haven't uh, actually. I've started it. You know, maybe. Um, 30 or 40 times. I've never driven it though. Uh, without a tag, you can't go too far, Roger. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, but uh, <laughs> you'd like to. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got this little place, it's called Bill's Lake, and it's a small little place uh, where they do uh, some fishing, and that's been my uh, my uh, target here for the last uh, uh, couple of months, is just <laughs> making it to Bill's Lake, Roger. That's uh, It's only about uh, eight miles away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like you're real close. Yeah, I'll get out of here. Somebody wants to get the radio set. It's been good talking to you about it. And uh, I'll be listening. Stay fair. 73 ATZ. Roger, Roger, Jim. Uh, before you go, what uh, radio did you say you're running? 7300. 7300. Yeah. Uh, Jim. Yeah, I'm sorry, we keep doubling. Uh, you said a 7300? That is correct. Roger, Jim. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, three is that way. You have a, a great uh, afternoon and a beautiful weekend. This is KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Net. If uh, you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Hey, C9, BKV. Well, let's see here. We have got uh, Milford uh, down, so I have to reset that. Uh, that's my my mainstay uh, is Milford. They uh, do such a, a great job. It's one of the one of the great uh, uh, SDR locations in the country, I, I think. Milford and there's a there's a place out in California. I don't know if uh, you might be familiar with that, but it's called uh, uh, Half Moon Bay. SDR repeater out in California, by San Francisco, I think it is, and that that facility is just unbelievable, uh, just just uh, un unbelievable, and uh, so uh, you know that when uh, sometimes we uh, would uh, do uh, uh, communications on uh, 80 meters 
uh, to uh, to California at uh, three o'clock in the morning, and they could hear me just fine, but uh, nobody there could make the trip back this way, which is unusual because usually you you think that uh, a pass going out would share the same pass uh, coming back paths you know you know but that's not necessarily true sometimes uh, they take two different paths and uh, you can you can make it there but uh, they can't make it back because they can't get on the same path for some reason so uh, that's why uh, that uh, half moon bay uh, sdr is so great out there because i could transmit direct uh, to uh, california at three in the morning on 80 and they could copy me fine and then when they would transmit i'd be uh, monitoring half moon bay which uh, for them it was a trip of maybe uh, uh, 100 miles maybe uh, 50 miles depending on where they were in california so it really worked out anyway uh, this is kc9 vkv the friday afternoon kiso v like net if you have a radio you want to check out uh, give me a shout kilo to victor india victor india station come back slowly with the call sign please Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon. It's Kilowatt 2, Victor India. You got Tony here in Virginia Beach, uh, suffering on a new little radio we got. Seems to be hearing you very well, wondering uh, how you copy. We're just running 100 watts in a vertical. Oh, gosh, uh, I'm copying you on my local antenna. It looks to be about uh, 10 over, Roger, Roger. All right, great band conditions, yeah. It's a ground mounted vertical, 05. Using the hand mic, this is an ICOM 718, very, very low end. Uh, HF rig, but uh, it, it seems to be receiving very well. It seems very quiet compared to the one I had about 10 years ago, so I guess they made some refinements on the radio. Go ahead. Roger, now I'm looking at your audio signal, and uh, you could uh, use a, a little fattening if you might be interested. Well, there's not much I can do with this microphone, but if I go on my 7600, oh boy, you'd hear me a lot different than you hear me right now. Uh, Roger, what do you have... Uh, uh, do you have a com uh, compressor on that radio? Uh, yeah, it does have a compressor. Uh, like I said, I just took it out of the box, literally, a few minutes ago. Here's the compressor. Let's try it. Okay, now I'm using the compressor. This is K2VI using the compressor. Yeah, the peak now, it's, not, it's peaking. It's really up there now. It's probably very hot. Go ahead. Yeah, now what we want to do, Tony, is we only want that compressor to run a 3 out of 10 or a 30 out of 100. We want to be very, uh, very uh, laid back on that compressor, but we want to use it, but just uh, laid back. So if you, can you give me a 3 out of 10 on that uh, compressor? Uh, yeah, if I could look into the, um, <laughs> I've got to look into the manual to see how that, uh, I tried pushing my finger on it. Here it is right here. Microphone compressor. You got to push it. All right. So, uh, my game display, I'll hold down set for one second. So I quick set mode, switch up and down more times for mic gain. Yeah, so it's basically adjusting the mic gain uh, for the compressor. For the compressor. How do you okay, so uh, now you found uh, three, three out of ten on that compressor? Yes, I did. Uh, any, any difference? Uh, well, it will be because we, we're moving now. Uh, do you know where your ALC meter, can you bring your ALC meter up with the mic gain in hand? And now that we have our compressor in line at a three, we'll go to our ALC meter and uh, with mic gain in hand, we'll uh, just speak naturally into your microphone, just like you normally do, and take your mic gain and adjust your mic gain to where your AOC meter is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Mid-scale to two-thirds by way of adjusting your mic gain as you speak naturally. Roger? Oh, well, yeah, I've, I've did that before, so I know how to it's adjust it. Remember, it's only the hand mic. Let me, let me do something. Let me try the... Uh uh, I'm going to try here, hold on for a second, the SM6 microphone, and this is a, uh, this is a desk mic, and see how this hand mic is really just something they throw in there, so it's not going to really do any good. Let me just plug this SM6 in and see if it makes a difference, okay? Alrighty, although that uh, hand mic uh, sounded pretty good, but uh, go ahead with your, your desk mic, Roger. Okay, very good. This is the SM6 microphone now. This is the desk mic. Let me just make sure that I have the, uh, uh, this is 
Uh, okay, yeah, that's pretty good right there. All right, this, so this is the SM6 desk mic right here, compressor on. And the ALC right is at the, about three quarters right now. Uh, this should sound decent. All right, uh, yeah, you're kind of... Uh uh, off and on axis to the microphone, so uh, kind of concentrate on being on axis with that microphone so I can hear you, uh, uh, you know, uh, more normally, clearly. And uh, so you're still running your compressor at a three, and you've got your ALC meter up, and with mic gain in hand, uh, and you're speaking naturally on axis to the microphone, uh, adjust that for mid scale to two thirds, Roger. Okay, hello, test one, two. Hello, oh, that, that looks really nice right there, getting very nice deflection on the, uh, on the ALC. Uh, it doesn't stay up all that long, so this seems to be, uh, this looks to seem pretty good here. I don't know, what do you think? Do you see uh, uh, the dog power okay? Uh, it's all about dog power to get through, because especially when you're running 100 watts. You want your audio to uh, not sound muffled or anything, so this should be pretty decent right here. Yeah, it looks like about 3 dB, which is exactly uh, what we're looking for as far as dynamic range. Uh, and uh, that uh, happens uh, again, you know, our, our setup procedure is uh, the uh, compressor a token amount, a 3 out of 10, and then uh, move to that ALC and adjust your ALC uh, with the mic gain to where your ALC meter is running mid-scale to two-thirds. And uh, those two things will give you a 3 dB, usually, will give you a 3 dB dynamic range, which is uh, nice and fat, but it's not, uh, it's very uh, clear, clean, uh, and uh, you can't even hardly tell the processing, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm liking this radio. I have a much, much better radios, uh, you know, that are not in line right now. However, um, this one right here, uh, even though it's probably the most low-end one I have, you know, it's not going to give me any kind of, you know, melodious, sleek, slick audio. Good communication audio, yet. But uh, it's, it's not going to do any more than that. But because it's a very low-end rig, you know. Uh, but the Icon makes good stuff. It just doesn't have the bells and whistles, doesn't have that many options, doesn't have that many adjustment options either. It's pretty, uh, it's just about as bare bones as you can get it. However, I didn't, I'm not really going to be using it to talk on the radio. I'm going to be using a more of a short-wave receiver. Because, uh, you know, I have uh, uh, the, the TS-590, uh, you know, ICOM 7600. So I got a couple of nice rigs, 7410, FTBX 3000, Yesu. So, you know, I got some rigs that could, uh, that can make sound really good. But, um, I just wanted to test this out to make sure that, uh, there's no defects before I send in the warranty card. Go ahead. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, you might be still a little hot into your ALC, though. Okay, hold on. You, yeah, all right. Hold on for a second. Let me go back into my set mode, and uh, let's bring that down a little. All right, I'm going to bring that down to here. All right, so uh, let me hit set, and there you go. Okay, now um, I brought it down a little, the game down a little bit, another dB or so. This should sound pretty, uh, pretty good. I'm about six inches away from the mic, speaking in a regular tone of voice. Go ahead. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I think we've got uh, 3 dB dynamic range, and the uh, the uh, the EQ of the audio is is just fine. Uh, nice intelligibility. Uh, you know, when uh, push comes to shove, uh, we need uh, as best uh, uh, you know uh, articulation that we can get, uh, so folks can hear us when we're under a thousand tons of noise, or in QRM, or if uh, we're being QRM'd. Uh, ourselves, uh, Roger, Roger. Absolutely, and there's a lot of that going on intentionally. So, yeah, you have to make it over all the garbage. Getting like CV sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate your help. The name here is Tony, by the way. Tango Oscar, November Yankee. And uh, we're down here at Virginia Beach. I had a, um, my dipole up, because I had that thing up at 90 feet. I had up by two huge trees in the back. And I was able to uh, get my air cannon that I made out of PVC. Uh, green guard switch. And uh, boy, that thing shot that uh, projectile up over anything I wanted it to. 
And uh, so I got this antenna up pretty high, and uh, this uh, hurricane that came in a couple of weeks ago, uh, I don't know if it was a hurricane when it came through here, but the winds were uh, gusting around 65, which is enough, and it took down the antenna. So right now I'm using my, uh, my backup antenna, which is a... Um, uh, a zero five ground mounted vertical. Go ahead. Uh, Tony, uh, sounds like in honor of our QRM attack today. I call this one Ode to QRMer. Here's a thought to consider for my QRMer. What if I were you and you were I? Listen to me, brother, at least try. You don't know me, but yet you attack me. I've done nothing to you, so so why? Think about it. It's not me to blame for this attack, but you. So I must represent something you distaste. But what could that be? Do my words cause you hate? Does my voice cause you pain? Think about it, brother. It's not me. It's your rage that's to blame. And you must get yourself under control, because if it's me you attack today, who will it be tomorrow? Some kid in the park? Yeah, that would be your style. Attack some kid in the park in the dark because it doesn't matter to you. Just anyone will do. Your rage and hate will seal your fate. You know, I would seek help if I were you. This has been Ode to Q.R. Immer. Back to you, Tony. That was a nice poem. I like that. And it could have some validity to it, too, if you think about it. The cowards behind the mic, as they would probably be cowards attacking some young kid. So, definitely that uh, that poem uh, has some uh, truth to it, and it's basically saying you're you're a sick person and you need to get some help. Because anybody who's attacking somebody else and making their trying to late make their life miserable, and they don't even know them. Uh, they just don't like their voice, or they just want to create problems, uh, is probably uh, need to uh, talk to somebody, uh, don't you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and considering that uh, to other folks, they're very nice people, you know. It's just when they, well, they... Yeah, QMR, I see you've chosen to join us again today. I can see you hiding out there in your little room, acting out your little secret fantasy, your uncontrollable desire to be in control. But I know that you know QRMing is a negative reaction to past life experiences. And now QRMing has become a habit because it hasn't cost you anything yet. But your luck will run out. You will be found out. And everyone will know you are the QRMer. You're not the nice guy everybody thinks you are. QRMer, hear my words. Your day of reckoning is near. Your life will be ruined when you ultimately have to pay your due to society. But my brother, you've changed, uh, well, now to walk in a different way. This is most dangerous, almost uncontrollable urge to control and disrupt. You have the power to help yourself by recognizing this inward hurt, manifesting in an outward attempt to seek relief through the satisfaction of hurting others. You must realize what's been done in your life is done. You have to rise above the past and seek control of your future. Rise up and start a new you. A better you, a positive you. Amen, brother. Hey, that is pretty darn good. Yeah, I don't get them too. That's a good way to really, really get them angry. <laughs> because think about it. What you're doing is you're showing no anger. You're showing no emotion. All you're doing is reading something that you wrote, and it doesn't have any. Um, bitterness to it, it doesn't have any emotion to it, it's a poem, and it depicts them for what they are, that's pretty darn good, I gotta, I gotta tip my hat to you, that is a pretty good way of going about uh, addressing a QRM when they're on the air, uh, I, I, I applaud you for that, go ahead. Well, thank you, just the, the thing is that, you know, some things uh, become habit, and uh, uh, QRM generating QRM is is uh, is a habit that uh, they don't even think about it uh, after a period of time. It's just uh, they just do it, 
and they don't know why they do it. They haven't even thought to, to try to reason about why they want to do that. Why do they want to, to try to disrupt, uh, you know, when they could be participatory, participatory, <laughs> whatever. They could get involved, uh, you know, in a, in a meaningful way uh, as far as communication as opposed to just generating QRM. Well, it's good to put this in and read that to him every time. Uh, the thing about QRM is I notice when I'm on the air and they're doing it, they're usually 80% of the time. They're not effective. They're not effective at all. Uh, the people that I'm speaking to usually come over the top with a little bit of annoyance underneath. But they're not coming over them. They're not disrupting them. So I'm thinking that this is somebody who really doesn't take the hobby seriously, just got a license, maybe didn't even get a license, maybe bought a radio to use on CB that they bought off of eBay that's maybe Mars cap, you know, which I hate. Whenever I look and I'm going to buy a radio, if it says Mars modification, I don't go near it. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't even want to see any filters in it. I want it to be bare bones, basically, unopened. Um, but uh, they probably bought that and then decided that, hey, and I could tune this antenna up on, you know, 40 meters or 20 meters or 15, whatever. And I could jam people. Wow, this is a lot of fun. I could jam my hammer operators. And that's the reason why they usually don't have strong signals. It's because they're probably loading it up on the wrong antenna. And you know something? Eventually, they'll burn the finals out. Go ahead. Roger, well, you know, not necessarily. I, I believe in mankind, and I think that, uh, you know, if, if they just stop to think about it, uh, it, it, you know, they realize that it's just, uh, you know, um, the other ways to, uh, to go about life as opposed to just being uh, a, a big, uh, you know, QRM, or, uh, you know, and uh, so hopefully... Um, Oh, well, anyway, that's, uh, I, we got to move along here. Thanks for uh, joining us, Tony. Uh, gosh, uh, I think you're sounding really good there. Uh, what radio, again, was that you're running? This is an ICOM IC718. It is a, uh, they're on sale now for five, 574 at HRO. I believe that's the price. And I tell you what. This is a slick little well-built radio, it's ruggedly designed, not cheap, the knobs are very robust, the tuning dial, it feels like it's ball bearing, um, the buttons have a really good feel to them, a very well-made ICOM rig, it's just that it doesn't have the bells and whistles, uh, the ALC is a little bit on the steep side, a little bit uh, not adjustable, so what you have to do if you get into a situation where the ALC is a little rough, which I don't notice because it does have DSP, uh, is just back down the RF gain a little bit and uh, quiet down the active uh, ALC. Uh, so not a perfect radio, but I tell you what, good enough to have a nice QSO with you, and uh, it seems like the receiver is very sensitive. I really like it, guys. Roger, and you were talking about the receive mode and AGC, Roger? That's what I meant. I say ALC. ALC is transmit. AGC is what I meant. Uh, good correction. Roger, Roger. Yeah, I run almost, uh, well, no compression. Uh, uh, I am uh, below compression in my uh, RF uh, gain control. Uh, because we, uh, you know, we are recording. I don't know if you know that, but uh, we uh, do uh, record live uh, from 3:30 till 5, and uh, the receiver is set up uh, with uh, no uh, AGC uh, compression, so we can capture audio uh, exactly the way it is without modifying it through, uh, you know, uh, AGC compression. So uh, we are just, uh, you know, uh, there's. When you speak, uh, when you stop speaking, there's no rush up. It's just uh, whatever the uh, background level is, uh, minus uh, any uh, compression, so we get the best best recording possible. And so, if you would like to hear your audio, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog uh, page. And on that page, we have about 1,270 some odd uh, recorded QSOs. But you'll be looking for one is specific called my group air check 82820 that is uh, th reference numbers for today's date my group air check 82820 
20 on a YouTube search for KC9 VKV. Roger. Okay, so the 82820 is the date that, that we know. And uh, so I just look at for that 82820 on the log. And then uh, look for your call sign, of course, KC9 Victor, Kilo Victor, and then look at that. I'd like to listen to that, QSO. That would be really cool to see what this radio sounds like. Uh, and then what I want to do is, if you're on maybe tomorrow the next day, uh, come on with my uh, 7600 with my EQing and my RE27 microphone. Uh, also, I'll do it with 100 watts. And just to see the uh, contrast, go ahead. Uh, Roger, yeah. Uh, the, the YouTube thing is uh, go to YouTube and do a call letter search on YouTube for KC9VKV, and that will take you to our QSO VLOG page. So you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for KC9VKV. Roger? I'm going to do that right, right, right now. Very good. And what is your name? Name here is Jim. Juliet India Mike, and uh, it'll take us a couple of days to get this uploaded to uh, YouTube. Roger. Okay, I'll keep this. I wrote it down, so I'll check it out. Like uh, you know, maybe Sunday, if it's up by Sunday, that would be nice. If not Monday, Jim, I thank you for that. That's really nice to hear a QSO, and this was a nice QSO, by the way. So thank you for that. And uh, what is? I guess you're up in the Upper Midwest. Uh, what's your QTH? Uh, we're just across the Ohio River from Louisville, Kentucky. We're on the Indiana side of the uh, mighty Ohio right at Louisville. Oh, okay. So that's a pretty nice shout for a daytime uh, a daytime 40-meter or so. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking, uh, who as the crow flies, maybe, uh, would you say 700 miles? Yeah, that's... Uh, Pretty much, uh, well, we <laughs> when we built the station, we were saying 20 over from uh, Montreal to Miami. And, uh, you know, we hit that quite often. We don't go uh, west too much. Mainly it's uh, uh, east coast with the hot spot through the Carolinas. Okay, very good. Very nice. Yeah, so this ground-mounted vertical is doing a very good job. Oh, I can't wait till I get my, uh, uh, my antenna back up. That's going to be good, because if I'm doing good now, I'm going to really be blowing the doors off with that antenna up at 90 feet. It just really, really, it does a great job. It's been up, uh, believe it or not, four and a half years. We finally came down with this storm, uh, and it was held up by, check this out, and I strongly recommend you use this, is point one zero five uh, Cyclone Commercial Grade Weed Weed Whacker Line, Commercial Grade Cyclone, or Hitachi Commercial Grade Round, not the one with the stars, the round type, Spiral Round, Commercial Grade, and I tell you what, you use that to suspend your antenna, and um, the only thing that's going to take it down is a hurricane. Uh, that antenna will be up in an area like you're in, uh, unless you get some really, really bad microbursts, you could have that antenna up for maybe uh, eight to ten years. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, but, uh, I'm, you know, unless the local squirrel populace decides it likes the taste of that, and you will, <laughs> you will be having a problem, Roger. I never thought of that. Yeah, or the local deer, because it does come down to a tree, so... Something to think about. A deer could munch on it. <laughs> or a squirrel. All right, cool. Jim, yeah, very good. And, uh, yeah, so you're doing, what are you operating? What is your operating conditions there? Uh, gosh, uh, this is a homebrew condenser microphone into an art preamp into a 35-year-old uh, um, Yeezy FT990 uh, into uh, SV220 up to a uh, no... Uh, uh, SWR resonant uh, dipole. Wow, non-resonant, you say? Uh, resonant, res non no SWR. It's uh, you can't see the SWR. That is excellent. That's a perfect antenna. You get all your output out, no ground loss whatsoever. Uh, no, no standing wave loss, I should say. Uh, you know, my first radio. I got into this hobby in 1991, and the first radio I bought was the A2FD990. Uh, DC version, not the ACDC, but the DC version. And I'll tell you what, that was a fantastic grade. I wish I never sold it. I sold it to a friend. He uh, passed away a few years ago. He still had it. Um, but uh, that, I missed that radio. That radio is one of those radios that don't break at all. 
because of the, um, you know, the plug-in board. If a board goes, you might have a problem getting one. Uh, you, that might be a big doorstop. But if that, that radio doesn't have any interboard wiring. It's modular. So that radio should last a very, very long time. I'm not sure if they're using um, uh, the, the electric uh, capacitors in it or, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, oh, what do they call them? The uh, electrolytic capacitors that could dry up. But you know something, if you use a radio a lot, you usually never have problems with capacitors. Go ahead. Roger. Well, this radio has been pretty heavily modified coming and going, uh, and um, so it, it just uh, is uh, great. Uh, I had a chance to uh, run a 7300 for a couple of months. My Elmer wanted me to uh, check out the 7300, so uh, I did have one for a couple of months to evaluate, and uh, in the receive mode, that uh, a 7300 is just uh, uh, outstanding, particularly in the... Uh, the lower frequency range capabilities, audio capabilities. If uh, somebody's transmitting 100 cycle content, uh, that uh, 7300 will uh, uh, cipher it uh, out. You know. Now, you know, the 7300 suffers the same thing as any radio. Uh, if you keep the audio in that little box, you gotta you gotta plug that uh, that audio out and um, get it outside and uh, get you a full range speaker system. Uh, I suggest a 2.1 speaker system. It's uh, two uh, satellites and a subwoofer. And that uh, subwoofer will uh, get you down to 60 cycles. And uh, plug that <laughs> plug that into a 7300. And uh, you just, uh, you, you'll be amazed. You'll light up the room with that uh, bass, I guess. But uh, this is what I use for a, a, for a receive speaker. I use a Palstar SP30H. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's one single speaker, but that speaker is amazing. It's sort of like, almost like a DSP. It doesn't have any kind of filtering, I don't think, but it's a communication speaker made by Palstar. And I noticed that when I plug it in, it kind of takes out all the background noise in between words. It kind of makes it more like an FM sound. It's a very, very good speaker, but it's pricey, guys. Roger. Well, you know, that 7300 just needs a, a flat audio system, and that um, 2.1 system with a subwoofer gets you uh, down to 40 cycles, uh, 50 cycles in there, whereas a normal speaker system is just, you know, can't get that uh, lower lower frequency content. So uh, that, that's my experience. And also the 7300, if, if you run it in the filter one position uh, and receive filter one, uh, which is uh, no filtering, and uh, also uh, no noise reduction, and no, um, uh, what is the other, uh, impulse noise, uh, noise filter, get that out of there. Uh, that uh, receiver is uh, quite a receiver, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Really no, no reason to, uh, I mean, unless you like a big radio, and you like a little more options, I think the 7300 will hold its own against the big 7610 which is a 3,000, 30, 30, no, it's a yeah, $3,3100 radio, opposed to right now, believe it or not, they go for $1,000 to 7,300. That's one third the price of the 7,410, and the resolution on the screen is beautiful, not as big, probably not as crisp, but very, very acceptable, very nice. And it has a lot of things you can do with it. It's a fun radio, the uh, 7,300. And I think it competes with the 7610 quite a bit. If you go back and forth, anything you're going to hear, even a faint signal on the 7610, you'll be able to hear on the 7300. So it just does, it lacks the size, and it probably lacks a lot of the bells and whistles that the 7610 has. But that's about it. But that's the difference between, that's a $2,000 difference there, uh, Jim. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 7610 is a, a unique radio in that uh, they have a, a special feature called Drive. And uh, Drive is a further audio compression scheme that uh, just lets you... It, it takes off where the other normal situation ends. So you could have uh, like a 3 dB, 4 dB dynamic range, and you can take Drive on a 7610 and uh, move it from 50 percent to 60 70 percent and all the time you're decreasing your dynamic range uh, we did uh, an experiment with drive uh, that we took it all the way 
uh, to 100% uh, drive, uh, and uh, it's uh, <laughs> the audio dynamic range became half a dB. Now, if you can imagine, you know, like uh, a view meter bouncing around, what up, what up, you know, well, well, half a dB of dynamic range is, uh, it looks like a plate modulation meter. Uh, a current modulation meter uh, just quivering there right at zero level, Roger. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Oh, Icon makes some really stout stuff. I like the ruggedness of Icon. Uh, you know, back in, back in the 90s, even today, you know, Kenwood makes a good radio. Just that, you know, there's not that many to choose from. There's that uh, mobile one that they have to remove the space plate, which I really don't like. Radios with removable face plates that's connected with like a cable. I'm probably old fashioned. I don't like SDR radios either. I don't. I don't want to link it with the computer. I want my computer on the side to uh, do what I want, and uh, you know, and it doesn't suck up all that memory and all that stuff. I like a radio. I like looking at a radio. I'm old school that way. But uh, yeah, the the, uh, the Kenwood. You know, the only two radios they have is that. What is it? The 890. I think they still have the 990 and then the 590. So it's three radios. I got a 590 SG. Really good radio. It's a couple of years old. Very, very good rig. Very solid. But Kenwood always made a reliable radio. And then you got Yaesu. Uh, good radio. I just and I and they and they perform very well. But I don't know about the screen resolution on my FTDX 3000. It's a little bit below that of the 7600. And uh, another thing I noticed that I don't like about these is the knob, the construction, eh, you know, maybe the main tuning knob is really, really good on, uh, on the Aces. They get a really good main tuning knob. All the other knobs, forget it, they're garbage. And also, the thing I don't like about the 7600, which isn't that big a deal, but those little knobs that they have for RF power and compression and mic gain, uh, on the bottom left, and then you, if you set them, you could push them in. Uh, they're really cheap and wobbly. I don't, I don't like that. Um, but overall, they make very, very solid stuff. Except for one, that one thing, and they did the same thing on the um, on the uh, Pro Series with those little tiny cheap knobs that you could ju adjust the power and the mic gain, and I think it's the ALC or something else. Uh, and then you could push it in, and then they stay, sh you know, so they don't stick out. I don't know. I think they could have did probably a little better uh, using uh, Knox and the AC2. Kenwood, I never saw anything like that. They always made this stuff. That All right, Tony, I think we're about to fade out there. Your signal has dropped down. So let me say threes to you, buddy. Uh, good talking at you. And again, uh, if you want to hear your audio, uh, uh, go to YouTube and do a call letter search for KC9VKV. And uh, that'll take you to our QSO Vlog Net our, uh, page. And uh, you'll be looking for my group air check 82820. Take us a couple of days to get it uploaded. Roger. Okay, yeah, I'll be looking for that, that's for sure, Jim. And I hope to get you on the band soon. I think this is our first cue, so you take care. You're 15 dB over, by the way, and sometimes peaking 20 on peaks and then going down to 10. So you're an average of 15 over S9 on this little uh, vertical that uh, the, uh, transmits better than it hears. You know, the vertical transmit better than they hear. So anyway, 73, Jim. We'll catch you later. Have a good weekend. KC9, BKV from K2VI. Take care, Jim. Roger, Roger, Tony. Three that way, sir. Have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. This is uh, the uh, KC9 BKV uh, um, <laughs> QSO VLOG net. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Victor Echo 3, Victor Foxtrot Sugar, Ontario, Canada. Foxtrot Sugar, Ontario, Canada. Come back slowly with the uh, call sign again, please. It's uh, Victor Echo 3, Victor Foxtrot Sugar. The name is Glenn. Uh, Roger Glenn, and what radio are you running, sir? Uh, 7300 and 100 watts. Ah, okay. Well, g give me about uh, 10 or 15 seconds. Tell me about your antenna system. Let me uh, hear your radio. Yeah, it's a folded dipole, a DX, um, Alpha Delta DX uh, Plus, and uh, it works pretty good. It's a, uh, actually a feathered dipole, I think it is. Uh, 100 watts. The match is about 1.3 there right now, and 
Uh, this is BE3 VFS. Back to you, Jim. Yes, sir. Well, you got things uh, set up pretty good. Now, I'll give you a tip about that microphone. That is the uh, stock microphone. And what you want to do, you want to work that microphone across. You don't want to work directly into it. Pull it to the side of your mouth and talk across it, and that will get rid of all the uh, uh, voice plosives. Roger. So I guess that's what we got to do. <laughs> Can't talk directly into it there. Uh, the ALC scale, it's, uh, when I'm talking, the blue is right almost at the end there. Uh, the uh, compression is at 4, and the mic gain is at 40%, and uh, we're running 100 watts. Back to you. Okay, Glenn, let me give you the uh, setup for that uh, 7300. Uh, put your compressor on a 3. Uh, compressor on at a three and then uh, move to your ALC with mic gain in hand and adjust your ALC where your meter is running, running mid-scale to two-thirds. So get that compressor in there on at a three and then move to your ALC meter with mic gain in hand and just speak naturally normally into the mic and I, well you know what like I say work a, pull it to your lips and work across it you know that's the, that's the what you have to do with that microphone and then adjust your mic gain control until your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. Well, um, you're taking a little hit. Uh, Mother Nature has uh, pulled the plug a little bit, but y you know uh, the um, the ALC meter is better than your best buddy as far as telling you what's going on with that radio. That is the Bible. So uh, when you uh, are looking at your ALC meter, just uh, speak uh, into that microphone like you normally would uh, across it, and then adjust your mic gain control until you're running mid-scale to two-thirds. Now the ideal spot is right between mid-scale and two-thirds, right in the middle there between those two, but the, the uh, you know, you want to be between those two to get into the uh, to pass by the perfect spot, Roger. Okay, well, that's just the E3 VFS, and uh, we're away from it. Uh, and we're not too far away from the mic there, so we're at 25% of mic gain, and compression is on number three, and 100 watts. So uh, I just wondered how it sounds there now. Well, Glenn, you're, you're kind of fading out, but uh, it's not a question of being close to that mic. I want the, I want you to actually touch that mic with the the corner of your mouth. You know, is that's the deal. You just bring that mic to the corner of your mouth and talk across it. You're actually touching that microphone, Roger. Okay, Roger that. Yep. Well, the audio is still up. You'll see his way up at the end still, and uh, I'm on 20%. I'm going to cut it down. Uh, to 20% there uh, on the mic gain and the compression is still on three. Fairly high, but um, I think it's dropped down a little bit there. Roger. Well, that, that's it. Whatever, it, you know, your actual mic gain reading doesn't make any difference. It, it doesn't make any, you know, uh, that's not the point. The point is that you you adjust your ALC with the mic gain to uh, run mid-scale to two-thirds. And mid-scale to two-thirds is the, Im the important thing, not, th not where the mic level is, only as it relates to uh, how, what your uh, ALC meter is reading. Roger. Okay, Roger that there, Jim. Yeah, I'm waiting for my interface cable uh, to come fairly soon uh, so that I can run my ALS 600. So uh, I don't have the cable just yet to uh, make it work. So pretty soon we'll uh, have our amplifier in line there too. Oh, Roger, yes, and that, that <laughs> that's uh, 70, 7300 is such, just a beautiful radio, Roger. Yeah, we like it very much. Um, it is I've heard a lot of people out there, and uh, they definitely do like it. So, uh, yeah, the weather up here today is a little bit uh, cooler. It's not 85 or 90 degrees, and uh, we're enjoying it there. 
Hey, I really appreciate you coming back to me there. Uh, KK9 uh, KV, I think it is. Get the watch call number. Uh, sorry, Glenn, you kind of faded out there, and then I, I hit something, and my uh, screen went crazy, and so I had to figure out uh, what was happening, and uh, finally, uh, I think I've got a handle on it, but uh, anyway, let me say threes to you, Glenn. Uh, have a great uh, afternoon, beautiful weekend. If you get a chance, like I say, drop by uh, our uh, QZOP like page, go to YouTube, do the search for KC9VKV, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor, and then uh, we'll have this posted uh, in a couple of days, and you'll be looking for, uh, on that page one, you'll be looking for an entity called My Group Air Check 82820. Roger? Yeah, Roger that, Jim. I hope you got a copy on me there. Uh, I appreciate you coming back to me there. This is Victor Echo 3. Roger, Roger, three, sir. Have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. This is KC9 VKV. We are recording now live till five. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Kilo in your five. Bravo, Whiskey Kilo. Whiskey Kilo station. Uh, come back uh, slowly with the call sign again, please, sir. Roger, this is Whiskey Alpha Three. Call Whiskey. Kilo, W-A-3-G, W-K. Uh, go ahead. Yes, sir. What's the name there, sir? Uh, name is the day, Delta Alpha, Victor Echo. We're located in South Alabama. Go ahead. And what radio? Well, I'm running an ICOM IC-9100 into a Telegraph VA-500 uh, amplifier. Okay, Dave, I just uh, went around my uh, SDRs, and uh, I'm only uh, copying you on my uh, local antenna, uh, it looks like. But uh, come back and uh, tell me about your antenna there for about uh, 10 or 15 seconds. Let me look at your audio. Yeah, that's good. This is WA. My antenna is a uh, Hustler a four-band vertical antenna mounted uh, at the ground level with... Uh, a uh, radio system of 30 radials. Uh, I use this antenna because I have a, a small lock town and I don't have much room for uh, uh, access to the antenna system. And this allows me to, uh, to uh, do some work on HF. I'm also active on, uh, on DHF uh, single side so, uh, there, there you have it. Uh, let me turn back to you. Kilo Victor, WA3G, WK, Roger, Dave. Okay, I've looked at your audio, and you could use a little fattening. Uh, we have a, a generic uh, setup procedure, if you might be interested. Oh, uh, I'm all ears. Uh, it starts with your compressor. Bring your compressor online at a 3. It's just a token amount, but it uh, is the beginning of our fattening process. So uh, engage your compressor at a 3. Roger, Roger. Well, uh, my compressor is currently at 4. Go ahead. Yes, sir. We'll pull it to three. Well, we just need three. We don't want to. We don't want to possibly hear that compressor working. And a three will absolutely uh, put you in a position that nobody will even know that you're running a compressor, Roger. Roger. Uh, it is now three. All right. Now uh, go to your AOC meter with mic gain in hand. And I want you to speak naturally, normally into your microphone and adjust your ALC to where it's reading mid-scale to two-thirds by way of uh, manipulating your mic gain control. So uh, you bring your ALC meter up and uh, key and uh, talk and uh, just speak naturally. You don't need to whistle or, or anything, just speak naturally and just uh, adjust your mic gain to where your ALC meter is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Okay. And uh, uh, I, of course, we're running reduced power to drive the uh, the aircraft. And uh, 
The ALC where my bike beam is currently set uh, is about in that range, uh, one half to two thirds. Um, just a, a point here too, uh, the microphone that I'm using is a Shure Prolog dynamic microphone and uh, uh, just uh, one of the mics I had uh, laying around here and decided to try it with its, uh, with its rig. Go ahead. Uh, Roger that. Now, uh, you might consider putting a windscreen on that microphone. I did hear some uh, some transients, which is, there's no problem, but uh, if you have a windscreen that you can put on it, you just, you, you know, just minimize, or, or actually you just clean up that whole situation. Roger? Roger, Roger. Uh, you're not the first to suggest that. I have yet to, uh, to do that. Uh, go ahead. Roger, Roger. Go down to your local music store with the uh, wearing your mask. I would, <laughs> I would guess, and uh, get yourself, uh, uh, you know, a foam uh, windscreen. Uh, you can get them in any color you want. Maybe get three, you know, one for, uh, well, I don't know, but uh, any color you want. There, and I think they're about like three bucks a piece or something, and it just is amazing. Now, I am uh, running a homebrew condenser microphone, and I am right in the microphone. I am touching uh, the microphone. That's what a windscreen will do for. You. It just cleans up your act, Roger. Oh, very, very good. KT9 DKD WA3 GWK. Very good. Well, yes, I, I tend to do that, and uh, appreciate the uh, the time you've taken with me here uh, uh, this afternoon. And, and I did not write down your name on uh, uh, earlier here, and, and uh, I, I've forgotten it. Uh, go ahead. Roger, your name is Jim Juliet India Mike. And uh, we're located near Louisville, Kentucky. We're uh, just across the Ohio River from Louisville. We're over in Indiana, just across from Louisville. Yeah, very, very good, very good. Well, uh, your, your signal has been up and down, and uh, uh, it, it's up now. And I, I've, I've actually been able to copy you pretty well the whole time here. So uh, anything else uh, you might suggest? Uh, go ahead. Uh, no, I just, uh, you know, again, you, you get to keep that uh, compressor at a three and uh, keep your ALC uh, at uh, mid-scale to two-thirds. Now, I would leave my ALC meter up and uh, build a consensus of opinion over a period of a couple of days, you know, as you as you use the microphone and you're, you're looking for that mid-scale to two-thirds, uh, you know, and uh, over a period of time you will find that exact place where you're mostly mid-scale to two-thirds uh, all the time. And when you run it like that, you, you will be running uh, about a 3 dB dynamic range. Now the other uh, um, benefit to that is that you have very little punch through. A punch through is where you have a, um, a range that uh, you're, uh, you know, if you were looking at your meter uh, signal on a, on a VU meter, uh, that meter would hit a certain point and stay there all the time. Punch through is when all of a sudden you have a 3 dB punch through that, that uh, normal level situation. Well, running a mid-scale to two-thirds on your ALC drastically reduces any of that uh, punch through because uh, that, uh, you know, that limiter is uh, into limit most of the time when you're uh, running uh, mid-scale to two-thirds and uh, so it doesn't uh, have a tendency to uh, all of a sudden punch through, Roger. It's very, usually uh, very uh, systematic as far as uh, the uh, peaks. And that, that's what I'm looking at here. I have a view meter tied to uh, my uh, audio receiver. And, uh, you know, I've got your voice adjusted for zero level. So I'm looking at your peaks, uh, all the words of your peaks, you know, and I can tell usually by, you know, if a person is speaking uh, at a halfway decent tempo and uh, their, you know, their words are flowing, I can look at my view meter and tell very well what your dynamic range is by how the, the meter moves. Roger, Roger. Yeah, very, very good, and uh, uh, thank you, Jim. One, one other uh, quick question. Uh, I do work a fair amount of VHF weak signal, and uh, are there any changes that, that you would recommend uh, to setting my audio uh, for weak signal work? Go ahead. Uh, that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get that audio up to maximum 
capability, and that is, uh, you know, normal speech is uh, said to be 10 dB dynamic range. So without any processing, somebody's normal speech pattern is uh, uh, 10 dB, and uh, uh, dynamic range is the difference between the uh, the smallest signal and the loudest part of your voice. So we say without processing, the human voice is about 10 dB uh, dynamic range. But uh, you know, when it comes to transmitting, we want to fatten that up uh, and. Uh, increase our, our uh, signal to noise ratio so uh, 3 dB um, versus 10 dB is a lot fatter sound and uh, goes a, a lot better and uh, so that's going to help you uh, uh, whether you're QSO or uh, whether you're uh, contesting or whatever you have maximized your audio capabilities when you are running at a 3 dB dynamic range now obviously you could continue to force your ALC meter higher uh, uh, and reduce that uh, 3 dB dynamic range to 2 dB to 1 dB if you wanted to. But what happens is you, you need some life in your audio. You need some dynamics because if you just get KD up against the door, uh, that uh, becomes very difficult to, uh, to understand. So you have defeated your purpose even though your signal is louder. All these words are crunched together if you don't have any dynamic range and you can't understand what it is. It's just like a moan you know, big, big moan. So you need some dynamics in your voice characteristics to uh, make it uh, intelligible. And we've found that uh, 3 dB is, is the ideal point. Roger. Yeah, very good. kc 9 dkb wa 3 gwk Okay, Jim. Well, this has been quite an education for me, and I appreciate the time that you've, uh, that you've taken with me here. Uh, no other questions. I, I, uh, uh, Real, uh, real happy with the advice that I've gotten here today. Go ahead. Roger, Roger. You know, the most important thing, and here's another thought for you, that uh, as you look at your uh, ALC meter uh, or your, your output uh, watt meter or whatever, you know, there's a game you can play, and that is try to keep that meter in the sweet spot as you speak. And uh, that uh, is accomplished by a rate of speech because you can't keep the meter up if you're if you're hesitant like that so you have to talk fairly fluently and uh, you know try to uh, modulate your words uh, in the in the ballpark from one to the other as opposed to spiking one word here or spiking one word there or whatever you know you want to speak uh, as best you can uh, uniformly so uh, and, and then keep that meter as you're looking at your watt meter or whatever put it in uh, put it in PEP so it moves fairly quickly not uh, RMS but so you're looking at your output in PEP and uh, you're trying to keep that meter up as, as near as you can to the uh, uh, sweet spot uh, and this is, uh, you know, it takes you a long period of time to to uh, you know get get good at it. But the more you look at it, the more relationship you see between your voice and and the uh, meter movement. Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Okay. Well, that's uh, uh, that's some good advice there, and uh, I'll uh, I'll make a note to do that. A mental note here, and uh, try to uh, try to uh, see what I can do to improve things here. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. Uh, Roger, Roger, Dave, three that way, sir. Uh, you have a real good afternoon, great weekend. Uh, this is uh, KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG net. We've got about three minutes till five. We they do turn into a pumpkin at five o'clock, so uh, if you want a radio check, give me a shout. KC9VKV, uh, JEV, is that a Roger? Uh, Julius Delta Echo. Okay, hang on, I'm changing page here. I come back slowly, phonetically with you, Hosein. Uh, 204, okay, give me the first part, please. Kilo India 4. Kilo India 4, Juliet, uh, uh, Denmark, Echo, Roger. Oh, Roger, Roger. Okay, and what's the name there? The name here is Jeff, Juliet, Echo. Roger, Jeff, and whereabouts are you located, sir? Wilmington, North Carolina. And what radio are you running? Uh, Icon 7300. 
Okay, and uh, give me about 10 seconds or 15 seconds and tell me about your antenna system. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, the antenna uh, is due to a half Again, as a full-sized uh, G5RD, up about 25 feet, um, but uh, haven't had the opportunity or the help uh, in the computer. That's what I'm going with, and I'm running back. All right, so you're running the uh, 7300 with the uh, stock hand mic, Roger? Okay. Uh, I would, uh, we have a setup for that if you'd be interested. Uh, first thing is uh, engage your compressor at a 3. Turn that uh, compressor on and uh, put it on a 3. Roger, roger. Okay, copy that. Okay, then move to your ALC with mic gain in hand. And uh, on that uh, stock mic, what you want to do is pull it to the side of your lips and talk across it. Do not talk straightly into it. Pull it to the side of your mouth and talk across it. Uh, speak naturally, normally, and as you speak, uh, adjust your mic gain until your ALC meter is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Okay, mic gain uh, up to two-thirds. Okay, and now uh, you might want to talk just a little bit more than that so I can see your audio to be sure that uh, we're at the right place. Okay, now I have, I have not made the uh, adjustments to compression or the ALC. I was writing this down as instructions uh, as we go, okay? Alrighty, so uh, now you've got the instructions, let's go ahead and try to do it. Uh, that uh, ale, that uh, compressor is right there by your fingertips. Uh, are you familiar with the 7300? I'm getting acquainted with it. I see. Well, uh, let's see. That little button there, I think, will uh, uh, explain it all. Um, I think it's fairly easy to uh, get to your uh, compressor that way, Roger. Uh, I'm not actually sure about compression. I've got the uh, display on audio, uh, but the uh, compression I'm looking and lost. Alright, uh, gosh. Uh, uh, all I know is I think you, 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 if you hit that button you go through different things. I, I believe that's the way it is. Well, <laughs> now which button <laughs> I think it's uh, upper uh, to the right, as I recall, uh, t but towards the the middle of the of the radio. Ah, yes, the the multifunction button, which pulls up uh, compression, and the compression right now is showing uh, five. All right, you want to move that compressor to a three, compression level at a three, Roger. Kind of faded out, Dave. Uh, what happened there? Uh, I, I, I don't know how to get the compression selected. I've got it on the menu, but I don't, I don't know how to go from the current function, which is RF power, and to move it down to select compression. Roger, Roger. Uh, yeah, I think we're better off just taking <laughs> taking notes, and uh, then as you become more familiar with your radio, uh, you can apply those. So, uh, compressor on at a three, then move to the ALC with mic gain in hand, and adjust your mic gain to where your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Work uh, across the mic, uh, pull it to the side of your lips and work across it. Don't uh, work directly into it, Roger. I copied that, and I did figure out how to move it. I know you've got you're up against the 1700 deadline. Uh, what's the next instruction? Okay, so you've got your compressor at a three. Roger. All right, uh, move to your ALC meter and uh, with mic gain in hand and adjust your mic gain to where your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. 
Okay, now that's going to take another little familiarization. Uh, what's the step beyond that? That's it. I mean, the next would be EQ, but you sound pretty good. That stock microphone is hard to screw up. <laughs> that, micro, that stock microphone. Folks don't realize that, and the first thing you want to do is jerk that stock hand mic off and put it in a desk mic, you know. But that uh, hand mic uh, is really nice. Uh, you, you'd be hard-pressed to... Uh, to do uh, duplicate that, uh, it's going to cost you uh, 200, 250 bucks uh, to get a microphone to uh, to do better than that uh, stock hand mic on the 7300, Roger. Uh, and uh, I would rather spend this on getting my antenna repaired. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or me new shirts. <laughs> this one guy said, how come you're running the same two shirts all the time? I said, it's called budget. I have none. And I said, but you sound like you're a go-getter. You go ahead and uh, see if you can scrounge me up some uh, some money for a wardrobe, Roger. Uh, copy that. Uh, tell me, where, what's your location? Where are you? Uh, we're uh, just uh, across from Louisville, Kentucky, on the Indiana side of the Ohio River, right at Louisville. Okay, very good. And you must be, uh, you must be running, uh, and, and your signal is magnificent here in the Wilmington. Roger, we're running a SV220 up to a no SWR resonant uh, antenna. Roger, dive hole. Very good. Well, I appreciate the advice. I did on an earlier uh, QSO, you were... Having, I did uh, uh, understand your site. I looked that up while I was uh, waiting for a break. And uh, in fact, on the one that I'm looking at, you were uh, helping another uh, chap uh, with his 7300 radio setup. And I'll I'll go to that and, and get any additional tips. I appreciate your time. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, that, uh, like I say, that is a, a, a generic setup that we've come up with that is good for any radio. We can set we can set up any radio, uh, regardless of the manufacturer, make or whatever. It's a very, very, uh, you know, it's to me, a very obvious uh, setup uh, that uh, we can. What we want to do is come up with a 3 dB dynamic range, which is a very fat signal, but a very uh, clean signal. Uh, nobody, uh, you know, we have uh, 50 years of experience in commercial broadcasting, so uh, mainly on the uh, programming side, not necessarily the engineering side, but uh, familiar with uh, audio and, uh, you know, those commercial sites, uh, AM radios uh, running uh, maybe 2 dB dynamic range, but some very expensive equipment to get that there without any distortion. So uh, I thought maybe we can get uh, you know ham radio to a 3 dB dynamic range with the equipment available uh, on most radios and still keep a very clean signal. And I think we've uh, come up with that, Roger. Well, yeah, good. And I'm, uh, I'm anxious to take the other step you recommended and Thank you very much again for the help, and I will uh, uh, let you go and, uh, and uh, enjoy, I hope, the rest of the weekend. Yes, sir. Well, let me say three to you and uh, give us a couple of days, uh, 48 hours to uh, get this uh, uploaded to YouTube and uh, you'll be able to uh, go there and hear where your audio is. Now, it sounds pretty good. Uh, uh, you know, might uh, get a better signal uh, next Friday and uh, uh, do some more work uh, on the EQ. Uh, uh, right now, it sounds sounds pretty good, but uh, maybe we could improve it, uh, uh, you know, with a better signal because I'm looking at your signal uh, on a, a spectrum analyzer and addition to the other stuff and I can tell uh, what your uh, audio content is and uh, but when you get to uh, noisier signals I get uh, noise in the uh, spectrum analyzer and I can't uh, sometimes tell the difference between uh, uh, noise and the, and the voice you know because when they both get down there together the uh, you know, spectrum analyzer is reading content, and if there's a lot of noise, it'll show that. So uh, maybe next Friday we get a better uh, RF signal, a uh, hotter signal, and I can see you more clearly. Roger. Terrific. I'll uh, plan to check in with you. 
Yes, sir. Well, three to you there, Jeff. Uh, appreciate the uh, drop by. And uh, uh, like I say, if you get a chance, uh, see you next uh, Friday. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll probably get this uh, uploaded uh, within uh, 48 hours. So uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, check that out. Roger. Roger, Roger, Jeff, three that way, sir. Have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. And, uh, my gosh, uh, we've been here so long, we turned into a jack-o'-lantern instead of a pumpkin. <laughs> oh, that is, oh, terrible. So we got to get out of here, uh, but we've enjoyed it. So uh, threes to everyone, and uh, thanks for participating. And, again, uh, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. On that page, we're running now 1,270-some-odd uh, recorded QSOs, but if you participated, you'll be looking for one in specific called My Group Air Check 82820. The numbers are referenced to today's date. My Group Air Check 82820. And with that, we'll say a threes all, and we will be returning this frequency back to normal amateur use. This is KC9 VKV Clear. Hey, Jim, uh, quick salutations from your friend up in Canada, VA3VMD. Hey, don't turn into a pumpkin. Have a great weekend, TGIF. <laughs> Roger, it's not the pumpkin part, it's the jack o lantern part that I'm worried about. Yeah, very good, Jim. How you doing? It's Vito up in uh, Toronto. I, I wanted to ask you if you ever got anybody from Quebec, because I know we were... We were trying to get somebody from La Belle Provence in there. Uh, I just was wondering, did you get anybody from Quebec or? Actually, it was Montreal. You know, our mantra, uh, as we were building station, was uh, 20 over from Montreal to Miami. So we're looking for somebody uh, from Montreal. Well, there you go. Well, I kept bugging a friend of mine up there who's got a good signal, but I hadn't heard him on for a while, and I sent him a little note. And I actually, I actually do. I did speak to him. And I said, make sure you talk into Jim, because he's been looking for somebody from Quebec. So, well, there you go. See, I told you, you were 20 dB all over the world there, Jim. <laughs> With a hot spot through the Carolinas. Uh, threes up that way, gosh, a beautiful signal. You, you got to be, uh, I'm on my local antenna, you got to be 15 over. Yeah, thanks, Jim. It's just the, um, it's just the 7300. The ACOM's doing about 630 watts, and it's the NFED antenna, my friend. You always got a good signal in here. I can uh, sit down when you start talking, and uh, it's like I'm listening to an FM station. Roger. Oh, thank you, sir. And your modulation is just perfect. Beautiful 3 dB dynamic range, and that uh, that uh, that re repetitive uh, return to the exact spot on peaks is just oh, that's you know just exactly what you want. Okay, Jim. Hey, listen. Have a great weekend, brother. You stay safe, and we'll listen out for you next Friday, man. Take care, and uh, watch that jack o' lantern. Roger, Roger, sir. Uh, three steps that way, and you have a great weekend. Catch you later. This is uh, KC9 VKV again, returning the frequency to normal amateur radio use. KC9 VKV clear.